right now on five on your side at 10. Tonight, Illinois voters will soon vote yes or no on amendment one. We verify a claim about property taxes. Trick or treat, mother nature looks to bring more of a treat for our Halloween evening. How many layers your kiddos will need? And our top story tonight, one week later. Lots of bad memories. Loved ones say goodbye to the teacher killed in the school shooting, as students are told a return to learning will be further delayed. Tomorrow marks one week since the tragic, deadly mass shooting at Central VPA High School. Good evening, I'm Mike Bush. And I'm Ann Allred. Just a few hours ago, a visitation ended for Jean Kushka at Cutis Funeral Home in Afton. She is the teacher being remembered for protecting her students during last Monday's shooting. Her funeral is tomorrow morning at the Cathedral Basilica. Tonight, students and staff at both Central VPA and Collegiate High Schools are getting more time to heal. Earlier today, it was announced classes would not resume this week like previously planned. Five on your side's Elise Schoening shows us what this week will bring for the community. I live right down the street, yes. For Doretha Long, this high school campus in her neighborhood has always been a familiar spot. How long have you lived just down the street? 16 years. But after Monday's deadly shooting, this spot now holds the weight of a lifetime's worth of tragedy. Lots of bad memory. A memorial site here at the school continues to grow, truly just emphasizing how long it's going to take for every student, faculty member, and family to continue to grieve and heal from this tragedy. Oh, they're having a hard time. They're really grieving, yes. Long's own cousin is a student at Central VPA High School who survived the shooting, but is living with the memories. And I am very concerned. The St. Louis Public Schools District is giving students more time to heal. Students were supposed to start virtual learning this week, but on Sunday afternoon, the district put out a statement saying, quote, Central Visual and Performing Arts High School and Collegiate School of Medicine and Bioscience will remain closed for the week of October 31st through November 4th, 2022. I asked Long if she ever thought this familiar spot would become a space to cry, to breathe, and to heal. No, I did not. This really hit home. Reporting in St. Louis, Elise Schoenig, five on your side. The district is encouraging anyone affected to continue to utilize counseling resources that they've made available. These services are for staff, students, and families across the district. And we put together a list of resources for anyone in our community impacted by the tragedy. Just text the word HELP to 314-425-5355 and we'll send you a link straight to your phone. The funeral for Jean Kushka will be held tomorrow at 10 a.m. at the Cathedral Basilica. We will stream it live on 5 Plus and KSTK.com. This weekend, local comic book stores were encouraging customers to be superheroes of the community. Five stores came together to donate a portion of the proceeds this weekend to benefit those affected by the Central VPA shooting. The stores also collected donations. For the past 10 years, we've all heard about these shootings in schools, and then it finally came to our doorstep. Um, it came to the doorstep of the school that the kids go to, and it's now affecting our community, and so everybody wants to know what we can do to help. We're still waiting to hear how much money was raised this weekend. School safety is top of mind in the wake of the Central VPA shooting. St. Louis Mayor Tashara Jones will be live on Today in St. Louis tomorrow morning to talk about keeping our schools safe. This important discussion will air during the 6 a.m. hour. Tonight, two people, including a police officer, are recovering after a fire at a North County motel. The fire broke out this morning at the Robinson Motel on Page Avenue in Pagedale. 20 people had to be evacuated. We are told that none of the injuries are serious. The cause is under investigation. Tonight, the Jefferson County Sheriff's Office is looking for the thieves who broke into a gun store. This happened just before five this morning at Modern Weapon Systems in Fenton. Investigators say the thieves broke a glass door. They did steal some gun accessories, but no firearms were taken because they were secured in a safe place.
We're now just nine days away from Election Day, and voters will decide the balance of power in Congress. One of the most hotly contested races is in the St. Louis suburbs. Tonight, our political editor, Mark Maxwell, previews the Missouri 2nd Congressional District race between, between State House Democrat Trish Gunby and U.S. Congresswoman Ann Wagner. A new poll in the Missouri Scout shows 22% of Missouri voters see inflation as the top issue on their minds as they head to the polls. Coming in at number two, protecting abortion rights at 21%. That's an issue dividing Congresswoman Ann Wagner and her Democratic challenger. I personally was, um, I was uh, hospitalized with my second child. Democrat Trish Gunby voted against the nation's most restrictive abortion ban when it passed in the Missouri House. Giving birth, being pregnant, there are risks involved with all of that. And so the fact that our state has now decided that you're gonna be forced to carry a pregnancy, especially for somebody who may be very young, who emotionally is not ready, physically is not ready, we have made that decision for them. And there is risk involved in all of that. In her campaign for Congress against Ann Wagner, Gunby says she would vote for a federal law to restore abortion access in Missouri. Did the Missouri legislature go too far? The state legislatures have, the Dobbs case said, this gets returned to the state legislatures. I don't know what will happen in the state of Missouri uh, when they go back into, into session, whether that will be a, adjusted uh, or changed in any way, shape, or form. I support exceptions for rape, incest, and life of the mother. So Missouri went too far? I support restrictions for life of the mother, rape, and incest. Gunby responded in an interview Wednesday on the record. Congresswoman um, Ann Wagner may think that exceptions for rape and incest, that's gone too far. She voted against access to birth control. In an August interview, Wagner denied voting against contraceptives, but congressional voting records show she voted no on the Right to Contraception Act that passed the House. I will be happy to defend my position, my pro-life position uh, in Missouri's second congressional district. I have my entire life and I continue, will continue to do so. Are you committing to the debater? I'm not committing to anything. Why not? <laughs> not I'm, I'm committing to working hard for my constituents. We later learned Congresswoman Wagner's staff secretly recorded that interview and used the video to complain to station management, my employers. Since we stand by that entire interview and because we believe in the importance of transparency, we're sharing the entire video of that interview with you, the people she works for. It's up right now on our website at KSDK.com. At the top of every Illinois ballot next week will be Amendment 1. The right to collective bargaining measure could change the state's constitution if it passes. Five in your side viewers want to know if it also guarantees a tax hike. Let's verify. Susan and Nancy asked the Verify team, is it true property taxes in Illinois will increase if Amendment 1 passes on November 8th? Our sources, the amendment itself, the Illinois Policy Institute, Robert Bruno, director of the Labor Studies Program at University of Illinois, and Brian Gaines, professor of political science, University of Illinois. First, what is Illinois Amendment 1? It would amend the Illinois Constitution, adding language that protects the right of employees to organize and bargain collectively and lists what issues collective bargaining can address. It would also prevent any future right to work laws. The verifying team checked the amendment language. There is no mention of property tax. Our experts agree. There's no language at all. There's not even any implied reference that could lead to that interpretation. Here's why property tax has been lumped into the conversation. A libertarian think tank against the amendment, the Illinois Policy Institute, thinks it will strengthen unions' bargaining power, they'll get better contracts, and that could be paid for with property taxes. You may have seen their campaign that property taxes could increase $2,100 for the typical homeowner. Here's how they reached that number. They took the average increase in property tax since 2010 and projected future annual property tax increases for 2023, 24, 25, and 26. They combined those four years of increases to equal about $2,100. If Amendment 1 does not pass, the numbers you've calculated would still apply for property tax increases because it's based on the last 10 years. You could get a reform-minded candidate in there who wants to lower property taxes or freeze them. We have a, a much more likely scenario of property tax reform, the cost of government coming down if Amendment 1 does not pass. Our experts say the Illinois Policy Institute is guessing about outcomes. It, it's not a property tax vote as such. Uh, you know, As I say, that's... Uh, 
a guess or an extrapolation or a forecast. Susan and Nancy, we can verify the passing of Amendment 1 does not guarantee a property tax increase. There is no language in the amendment regarding property taxes. I verify for you. Send an email. Verify at KSDK.com. As part of our mission to stand up for St. Louis, we ask you to vote in the November 8th election. And our voter guide can help you learn about the candidates and issues in both Missouri and Illinois. There's also information on early voting, election day hours, and requirements. So for this, just text the word guide to 314-425-5355 and we'll send you a link. And join us election night for expanded results and analysis. Our coverage will begin as soon as the polls close at 7 p.m. on 5 Plus and on KSDK.com. And then stick around for an expanded edition of 5 on Your Side at 10. We're just hours away from learning if the St. Louis Battle Hawks name will return. The XFL will announce the names and logos of its eight teams tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. St. Louis was named a host city back in July of the rebooted Professional Football League. It's been unclear whether the team will keep its popular Battle Hawks name from the inaugural 2020 season, which was cut short by the pandemic. A juvenile detention officer's gambit. They're very impulsive and they make poor decisions. And so chess teaches them they're going to be successful. How he's teaching the game of life through the game of chess. Mother Nature makes a strategic move just in time for Halloween and wait until you see how we start the month of November. Tonight we're learning the staggering scale of a Halloween tragedy in South Korea. More than 150 people are dead, another 130 hurt. They were trampled in the streets of Seoul. Authorities say an estimated 100,000 Halloween revelers tried to fit through a 13 foot wide street. Among the dead, two American college students studying abroad. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi says her husband is improving after Friday's violent attack inside their San Francisco home. The suspect, David DePep, will be arraigned tomorrow. New details in the investigation reveal zip ties were found in the home. The motive of the attack is still not known. A St. Louis County Corrections officer says kids who end up in juvenile detention are often impulsive, leading to poor decisions. But as you'll learn in tonight's Making a Difference report, he's trying to show them how to think before acting by teaching them the game of chess. At the St. Louis Chess Club, every day brings new choices. And more and more people are seeing value in that. We have about 1,000 members, and I think 20 or 30,000 go to the Hall of Fame for the exhibitions. You played a line I knew. James Tyus is one of those members who was captivated after walking in one day and playing against an 18-year-old stranger. He was so good and I was just like, I, I didn't know anybody could be that good. And so he kind of, I said, well, can you teach me? Nah. And Tyus was soon making moves in an unexpected direction. His chess journey began when he was a kid, but by the time he was 14, he ran away from home. I had an abusive home, drug addiction, uh, stepfather abusing, you know, abusive those type of things. In good moments, his stepfather did teach him the basics of chess. Then, after fleeing to the safety of his grandmother in East St. Louis, he soon joined the high school chess team. You know, the girls kind of say he's smart, you know, and then, so there was something that was, you know, special about that. That you know, if you played chess, everybody thought you were smart. These days, this Army veteran and college graduate is a St. Louis County juvenile detention officer. And his latest gambit? Teaching chess to the kids in juvie. Kids, so they what are you doing? Let me play. You know, I can beat you. You know, that type <laughs> of thing. And then uh, next thing you know, they're playing, and, it's, and chess is so contagious. At first, Torian Robinson says it was a good distraction. Using it to keep my mind off situation but Tyus knew the distraction could also be an education but they're very impulsive and they make poor decisions and so chess teaches them they're going to be successful they have to not be as impulsive and they have to think and Torian who was arrested in connection with a robbery is now one of his star pupils and in demand is a competitor it seems like every time I sit down at a chess table you always got a crowd of people watching on because the chess game be so intense it's like everybody want to see what's going on as for James Tyus, the officer is now an author. 
His book, Checkmate Life, highlights the many parallels between chess and life. And that book is also an animated series on YouTube. The object of the game of chess is to trap the other king. Decisions have consequences. And when they make decisions over the chessboard, they are happy or sad because they get an immediate consequence or maybe a few moves down the road. They see the effect of it, but they learn from that. <laughs> Life lessons on a chessboard. James Ty is showing that when you see what you think is a good move, look for a better one. And just having something positive going for yourself, it gives you a brighter future. The book Checkmate Life is available on Amazon. And a reminder, if you know an inspiring person or someone making a difference, let me know by email at mbush at ksdk.com. Tomorrow is Halloween, but some trick-or-treaters were out early tonight. The rain wasn't an issue at City Foundry St. Louis. The stores, food stands, and vendors handed out candy to kids dressed up in their costumes. We'd like to see your kids' Halloween photos. Text them to 314-425-5355. Include their names and details about their costume so we can share them on TV. Chief Meteorologist Scott Cannell joined us now with that trick or treat forecast, Scott. Yeah, and you know, I think Mother Nature is going to give us a little more of a treat tomorrow afternoon. Good. Certainly better than what we had today. You know, we were pretty murky across the bi state area for your Sunday looking out into Chesterfield. Here's some of those rainfall totals that we ended up with over in Anch and Oakville and Farmington right down through Waterloo, Illinois, close to it up in Berkeley with 9700 Centuria. You added a little more this evening at 77 hundredths of an inch and about a half an inch over in Collinsville, but just east of there, a little farther over in eastern Madison County, as well as portions of eastern St. Clair County, western portions of Clinton, Washington counties. We had some of that rain along the Kaskaskia River. It was a little heavier this evening than it is right now. Most of the heavier rain actually sliding onto the north here off to the west of US 45 out here in Clay County and it's slipping away. Our temperatures are holding in the 50s right now. Our weather system is moving through the by state region, but the backside of that still has showers into northern and western portions of Missouri heading into early tomorrow. Hard to see the arch right now. Maybe a little Moopsie heading out the door early tomorrow morning with that cloud cover and the misty light rain conditions lingering into tomorrow morning. 56 right now. Temperatures didn't move a whole lot today. 59 was our high, the low this morning, 54 officially from the airport just under an inch of rain. So from St. Louis East, we stay above 50 west of St. Louis. You're in the upper 40s, close to 50. We'll still have another batch of showers heading towards tomorrow morning. They'll be scattered around through the morning hours and then during the morning and by lunchtime, they'll tend to push off to the east and northeast of St. Louis. That sets us up for a pretty decent evening. We think for the trick or treaters tomorrow night should be drying out, clearing off temperatures slipping back through the 50s. Not perfect per se, but we've had a lot worse in St. Louis on Halloween for sure. By Tuesday, you're looking at some fine weather across the by state area. We will start with mainly clear skies. Temperatures will warm quickly. In fact, that is a trend here as we head into Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, even into Friday. Low 70s on Tuesday, but the warmer temperatures are just back to our west close to 80 degrees and that warm air is going to be sticking around towards the end of the week and into at least the first part of the weekend. We will bring in some more rain chances by later Friday into Saturday, perhaps into Sunday. We'll get better on the timing with that and get more specific as we get closer. But in the meantime, you know, once we get the rain out of here tomorrow morning, it's looking like it's a pretty decent rest of the work week and There'll be some wind picking up by Sunday into next weekend. So if you have a chance in the middle of the week, maybe you're feeling just a touch faint, you might want to go take a look <laughs> at some leaves. You are such a bad influence. Yeah, I am. <laughs> All right, thanks, Scott. Coming up, never forget stories of the Holocaust. Tonight, a first look at the world-class exhibit opening this week here in St. Louis. We are just a few days away from the grand opening of the newly renovated St. Louis Kaplan Feldman Holocaust Museum. And today there was a soft opening for some special guests, local Holocaust survivors. 
The museum closed two years ago for a $25 million expansion. The world-class museum now includes new interactive exhibits, allowing visitors to read, see, see, and hear the stories of Holocaust survivors. Rachel Miller is one of those survivors. Her entire family was killed at Auschwitz. Unfortunately, they did not survive. I lost 93 people in the war. I'm the only one that survived. Is it such a hard time in your life? Why do you choose to tell and share your story now? Because I am history, and it is my, it is my obligation to tell the world what happened. Curators say the expansion will further their mission to preserve the lessons of the Holocaust and empower visitors to reject anti-Semitism and all forms of hate. The museum opens to the public on Wednesday. A renewed effort tonight to keep a longtime all-girls Catholic school open. An open house was held today at Rosati Kane High School for prospective students. Last month, the Archdiocese of St. Louis announced it was closing the historic school in the Central West End. The group RK Forever is now working to keep it open as an independent school. We are moving forward with fundraising. We're moving forward with um, figuring out curriculum for next year. We're moving forward with trying to enroll students for next year. So as, as I said, we are trusting that the Archdiocese sees who, who we are and believes in what we're doing. Just last week, the school received the support of the St. Louis Preservation Board, which voted to seek landmark designation status for the school building. It's not a Halloween trick. The big treat up for grabs tomorrow night. Well, here's the ultimate Halloween treat. Tomorrow night's Powerball jackpot has grown to an estimated $1 billion. It's the second largest jackpot in Powerball history. You can buy tickets on both sides of the river. Sales end just before 9 p.m. I think the odds are something like one in 290 something million. So if you're the one, you can hang with Jeff Bezos and those folks. Yeah, you're very positive. <laughs> there you have it. Five on your side at 10, a late edition.